Hello. Our focus tonight on the program is the ongoing JAMB examination, which is now being taken in batches for obvious reasons. Have a good evening and welcome to Weekend File. The Joint Admissions and Matriculation Board 2020 Unified Tertiary Matriculation Examination commenced Saturday, 14th March, with 1.9 million registered candidates for UTME and direct entry, preparatory to seeking admissions into various tertiary institutions. JAMB has expressed satisfaction with the conduct of the examination, but noted some technical glitches usually associated with such massive exercise, which is being tackled by providing workable solutions. The examination has been on for some days now, and today a substantial number of candidates also sat for the examination, making it the seventh batch since the exercise began on the 14th of March 2020. The good news is that the results of the previous batches are beginning to be released, as some candidates already know their fate. You will learn more about the 20 2020 UTME examination that is still ongoing. What are the encumbrances being encountered in the process and how has JAM responded to them? And of course, the multi dimensional math practices being unleashed by the dubious candidates. My guest today is JAM Registrar, Professor Ishak Oloyele, who is going to bring in more insights into this. My name is Kirian Umayo. Let's get to work. The Federal Ministry of Health has confirmed 10 new cases of coronavirus disease in Nigeria, three new cases in the Federal Capital Territory, FCT, and seven new cases in Lagos State. This brings to the total number of confirmed cases in Nigeria to 22. Elizabeth Omori has a breakdown of the data. All 10 new cases are Nigerian nationals. Nine of them have travel history to Canada. France, Netherlands, Spain, and United Kingdom. They returned to the country in the past one week. The tenth case is a close contact of a previously confirmed case. The three cases in the FCT are being treated at the University of Abuja Teaching Hospital, Wawalada, while the seven new cases in Lagos are being treated at the Infectious Disease Hospital, Yaba. All the 10 new cases have mild to moderate symptoms and are currently receiving treatment. As of the 21st of March 2020, 22 cases have been confirmed, 2 cases have been discharged and there has been no death from COVID-19 in Nigeria. The federal government of Nigeria remains committed to working with states to provide optimal care for all confirmed COVID-19 cases in the country, contact tracing is ongoing to identify all persons who have been in contact with the new confirmed cases. The Port Health Services of the Federal Ministry of Health has heightened screening at all air, land and sea points of entry into Nigeria and adapted the protocols to reflect the travel guidance issued by the Presidential Task Force on the Control of COVID-19. The National Emergency Operations Center, led by the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, supported by partners, continues to coordinate response activities and strengthen preparedness capacity nationwide. It is important that Nigerians strictly adhere to social distancing and other necessary precautions in place. These include washing of hands regularly with soap and water, or using alcohol-based sanitizer. If no water and soap, social distancing is crucial to reducing the spread of COVID-19 through the use of no-touch greetings. Maintain at least two meters distance between yourself and anyone who is coughing or sneezing. Stay at home if you feel unwell with symptoms like fever, cough, and difficulty in breathing. Immediately call NCDC's 247 toll free number, which is 080097000010. Avoid 
or postpone events with large gatherings of people and avoid all non-essential travel to all countries. The Federal Ministry of Health, through the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, will continue to provide updates as and when they become available. The federal government has banned all international flights to Abuja and Lagos airports effective midnight Monday, the 23rd of March uh, 2020, uh, 2020 and to 23rd of April, except for emergency and essential flights. The one-month restriction is in addition to the closure of the Kano, Port Harcourt and Enugu International Airports, which started this Saturday. The statement by the Director General of Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority, Captain Mosa Nuhu, says all airports in Nigeria now operate domestic flights. As part of efforts to sustain the ongoing advocacy campaigns to curtail the spread of coronavirus through overloading of vehicles with passengers, the Federal Road Safety Corps has again advised all drivers of vehicles to carry only one person in front and not more than three at a row uh, behind, while motorcycle riders should carry only one person at a time. To their destinations. A statement by B.C. Kazim, FRLC Public Education Officer, the Corps Marshal Dr. Boboye Oyemi cautions motorists who notice any strange type of flu to consider the welfare of others and stay back, and notify the family and loved ones and of, of the development, and of course report himself or herself to medical examination and adopt all safety tips the Federal Ministry of Health has given. Uh, still on coronavirus, uh, there is a sense of urgency among shoppers in the Federal Capital Territory who are shopping up uh, preparatory to a possible shutdown of markets. Oninke Fine Face has an update on COVID-19 induced panic buying in Abuja. Here at the Garaki market in Abuja, the Federal Capital Territory, traders say more customers are coming. The likes of Chine Duobodo confirmed that he's making much more sales now than he does normally. And this, he says, is as a result of panic among residents who are coming to stock their homes. Some people that is buying half mudu of Gary is buying five mudu. Some people that are buying half bottles of leather is buying four liter, two bottles, three bottles. Everything is moving now. I can't lie to you. Uh, it's like some foreign goods. It's very costly. Foreign goods that we are buying 70,000 now, like fresh, stockfish, we are buying 200,000 now. They are just buying and buying, and everywhere is just jam packed. The roads entering the market, and even the prices of goods are hiked up. There are shoppers who say there is no need to panic, they are not worried, but just doing their regular routine of shopping over the weekend. I used to come here all the time. It's at times, it, you, you see more people than even this time now. So I don't, and did not notice anything panicky. The federal government had issued advice for people to adhere to precautionary measures and placed by relevant authorities. The president also in a recent statement encouraged Nigerians not to panic but simply take precautionary measures against COVID-19. In Abuja, Onengie, Fine Face, NT News. Well, and you're still watching Weekend File on the network service of the NTA. As part of measures to enhance emergency preparedness and response strategies, Kano State Government has constituted a task force on COVID-19. Inaugurating the task force at the Kano Government House, Governor Abdullahi Omar Gantuje described the measure as necessary to prevent the spread of the disease to the state. Abdullahi Mustafa has the report. Since the report of the first case of COVID-19 in Nigeria, Kano State Government initiated preventive measures against its spread to the commercial center. Apart from Ergaya Isolation Center, which Governor Abdullah Umar Ganduja inspected and promised to upgrade, two other facilities have been designated to handle emergencies. This was followed by the constitution and inauguration of a task force involving medical experts, security, religious and community leaders. The task force is mandated to assess the present situation and the risk of COVID-19 in Kano State, coordinate response strategies, and advise government on necessary further steps and actions. Coordinate resources mobilization for COVID-19 outbreak in Kano State. During an interactive session with newsmen, Governor Ganduji reveals plans to work closely with relevant agencies and individuals to see that proactive measures taken succeed. In Kano, Abdullah Mustafa, 
NTA News. To boost quality healthcare services. To boost quality healthcare services in the country, in line with the agenda of President Muhammadu Buhari, uh, 16 new dialysis machines and the state of the art blood bank and transfusion services have been inaugurated at the Afe Babalula University Multi System Hospital in Adwekiti, in Ikiti State. Yemi Dalemo reports that uh, a modern uh, helipad to ease transportation of patients and clients to the hospital also got not for use at the event. The four milestone projects are aimed at improving quality healthcare system in the country, respond to emergency in the delivery of qualitative healthcare, as well as support the current efforts in combating security challenges in the Kiti state and in the neighboring states. Founder of the Afe Babalola University at Dwekiti, Are Afe Babalola, explained that the gesture is to further consolidate on the university's position in the healthcare industry. We do not want a situation where we would have five patients and we have to come to go away and come back in two weeks' time. That is why we want to have all the necessary equipment which are used in modern universities. Okay. Commissioning the 16 dialysis machines at the institution's multi-system hospital, President Muhammad Buhari represented by the Alafin for your Oba Lamidi Olayiwola at the Yemen III, said the multi-million Naira equipment is a testimony to the private initiative-driven aim at enhancing post-provision of quality health in Nigeria. Oba Adeyemi, who also commissioned the state-of-the-art blood bank and transfusion services, commended the vision of Are Afe Babalala in bequeathing worthy legacies to humanity. Are Afe Babalala came to the world with certain philosophy, selfless service, industry, courage. So for all Nigerians and for all people who are wealthy, this will emulate you and leave a mark on the side of time. The chief of army staff, Lieutenant General Tuko Buratai represented Commander Chief Babadala on the provision of military outposts to support security in the Kiti state and the neighboring communities. The newly constructed Ministry of Aviation certified modern helipad to ease transportation of patients and clients to Abwad Multi System Hospital was also inaugurated. High point of the occasion was the presentation of two books entitled The Elusive Search for Nation Nigeria and Abwad Panani Education. Renaissance to the public in Adwekiti, Yemi Dalimo, NT News. Well, we're sorry for the mix-up at the beginning of that report. Nigerian Air Force Alpha Jets, previously out of action, have been cleared for takeoff in the ongoing counter-insurgency operations. Correspondent Najatu Tijani reports from the 407 Air Combat Training Group in Kanji. where it belongs now 455 seems to be celebrating its reactivation having been grounded since 2014 after undergoing periodic depot maintenance which commenced indigenously in 2018 this aircraft flew last in 2013 about seven years it has been grounded for seven years but with this current PDM, uh, it's back again online, as you saw it flying. It's, and also the MI-35P is currently ongoing. I believe in another one week or maximum two weeks, we should have that aircraft back online. The periodic depot maintenance includes avionics upgrade on Alpha Jet NAV 455, removal, inspection, modification and installation of both wings. Manned by the commander of the Air Combat Training Group in Kainji, squadron leader Kingsley Igweba and Nigeria's first female fighter pilot, Flying Officer Kafaya Tsaini, back on ground after displaying what indicates its combat readiness. Now 455, the yeah, Alpha Jet at the forefront of counterinsurgency operations, is now ready to be deployed. A water salute to this fighter jet, which will now be back in action while it awaits more platforms to join it in battle. Najaa Tijani, NTA News. Masilan Security Matters, uh, troops of Operation Hadarindaji, a joint military operation of the Defense Headquarters, 
have rescued nine kidnapped victims in Gando village in Zamfara state. A statement by the acting director of defense media operations, Brigadier General Bernard Oyoko, indicates that uh, the liberated victims include seven males and two females. Similarly, 24 bandits were killed during a clearance operation that spanned through Gurbin, Maria, Kwari, and uh, Garingado in Kasina State. Brigadier General Oyoko notes that uh, the operation is a response to a distress call. Uh, it led to killings of 24 bandits, recovery of several arms, 42 rustled cattle, and 38 sheep uh, to the armed forces and other security agencies to enhance proactive uh, measure. Nigerian Governors Forum has donated a sum of 200 million naira to the Lagos State Recovery and Relief uh, Fund instituted to assist the victims of Abula Do gas explosion. Chairman of the Nigerian Governors Forum, Kayude Fayami, made the announcement this Saturday when he led two other members of the forum to have an on the spot assessment of the level of disaster in Lagos. Annie Daniels reports. All important visits to the sites of the last gas explosion in Lagos, Abule Aldo to be precise, by the Nigerian Governors Forum is to commiserate with the government and people of Lagos State. The chairman of the forum, Governor Kayode Fayemi of Ekiti State, while speaking on behalf of other governors, said the federal government is going to work hand in hand with the Lagos State government to ensure that this kind of incident do not occur any longer. It's both an on the spot assessment as to the recommendation we will make as the Nigerian government forum on how to tackle this perennial problem. Meanwhile, demolition of affected structures is still ongoing and the Lagos State government wants that anybody found engaging in any form of criminal activity will be brought to book. We are appealing to the people that if you don't have business there, don't come to the scene. In Lagos, Annie Daniels, NTA News. President Muhammadu Buhari sends warm felicitation to Senior Pastor and General Overseer of Omega Fire Ministries International, Apostle Johnson Suleiman, on his 50th birthday, congratulating him for a life of service and dedication to God and humanity. The President felicitates with the Christian community and all congregants of the Omega Fire Ministries, praying that the Almighty God will continue to sustain the General Overseer in wisdom, strength and good health. The media, no doubt, has a complementary role to play in any democracy, like that of Nigeria, but journalists must strive to be guided not to stand in the right of way of government. Senior Special Assistant to the President on Media and Publicity, Garba Shehu, uh, shared this opinion at the 2020 Annual Leadership Lecture of the Abuja Branch of uh, Barawa Old Boys Association. Timothy Yusuf was there. This convergence of the Abuja branch of Barewa Old Boys Association is less than 50. This is in compliance with the Federal Capital Territory Administration's directive, restricting social gathering to not more than 50 persons per time due to the spread of COVID-19. Media and democracy, challenges of journalism, is the theme of this year's lecture. Senior Special Assistant to the President and Media and Publicity, Garba Shew, is an old boy of the college with number B2768. He believes that the advent of the new media the world over, and Nigeria in particular, has eliminated the gatekeeping role in the practice, therefore posing more harm than good. A journalist has no business standing in the right of a government to govern. A government that is elected by a majority of Nigerians put in office by popular will, has a right to rule. At all times, the journalists should say the truth and nothing but the truth. For other old boys, the Minister of Defense, Major General Bashir Magashi, the Governor of Kaduna State, Nasir el among others, national interest should be the driving force of every citizen, irrespective of religion and ethnic divide. The significance of this lecture is to remember our years in our alma mater. The Director General of the NTA, Yakubu Ibn Mohammed, was represented by the Executive Director of News, Mohammed Labo. The Barewa College was founded in 1921 
and has produced five leaders at the helms of the nation, counting from the late Prime Minister Abubakar Tafawa Balewa to President Umaru Musa Yaradua. Timothy Yusuf, NT News. The Nigerian Deposit Insurance Corporation, NDIC, is collaborating with regulatory agencies and financial institutions to ensure that uh, the banking sector is effectively supervised to sail through the global economic effects of coronavirus. The corporation at a sensitization workshop with members of the House Committee on Insurance and, Actu and uh, Actuarial Matters uh, wants banks to restructure their credit facility for investments to thrive. Michael Olaleye has that report. Supported global trade and investment in a quick downward trend like the coronavirus pandemic, countries are scrambling for solution with the Central Bank of Nigeria rolling out 1.1 trillion Naira intervention to support critical sectors of the economy as out of 50 billion Naira soft loans to small businesses. Now the NDIC, one of the leading deposit insurance corporations in the world, is futuristic in its approach as it is already exploring avenues for safeguarding the interests of depositors using global best practices. We will expect the banks to reorganize their credit administration system such that they can give some respite to borrowers. The chairman board of directors, NDIC, Ron Keshu Kefun, wants the Senate to expedite action on the passage of the NDIC Amendment Act of 2006. When passed into law, this amendment will set the seal on further enabling the corporation to help depositors access insured funds within 30 to 90 days. The mandate before the House Committee is to ensure that legislative instruments are strengthened to support NDIC's goal of averting distress in the banking industry. We can now see how we can blend it to bring out the best for the economy. And that's exactly the common denominator is that finding Nigeria in a very good footing where everybody will benefit from it and where confidence will now get to the peak. The workshop went into technical session where issues relating to impact of microeconomic policies on the banking system were discussed. In Lagos, Michael Olale, NT News. At the end of the fourth edition of the Technology and Innovation Expo in Abuja, stakeholders are asking the small and medium scale enterprises and uh, entrepreneurs to identify inventions and invest for the commercialization and, of course, mass production of the developed uh, technologies. One of such exhibitors is the National Agency for Science and Engineering Infrastructure, NASENI. Justin Bemuni reports on the agency's contribution to this year's expo. <laughs> Naseni has been at the forefront of delivering science and engineering infrastructure to enhance the growth of federal government's effort to diversify the economy. This has been achieved through the creation of an enabling, knowledge-driven environment for local mass production of goods and services required for the nation's technology advancement. At this year's Science and Technology Expo, the agency proved that it is currently and consistently developing new designs and technologies to solve national problems. Whatever we come with in the previous years, we don't bring them. We bring new things. Today you have seen ranging from oil, shelling machines, you have seen new innovations in, farm, in terms of standby power, not necessarily generators this time around, but even renewable. You have seen the latest innovation in terms of technical laboratory equipment, potential equi uh, uh, institutions. Already, already from the business plans we have developed, we have seen people, we have seen people asking questions. And we have already selected team from our technology business development unit to interact with them to enlighten them more. In fact, already uh, our smart meter for metering electricity energy, people are already bidding. They have been showing interest and it's been demonstrated here today. 
The agency now more than ever is craving for partnership from investors and entrepreneurs for commercialization of these technological developments. In Abuja, Justin Bemuni, NTA News. Uh, thank you, Justin. The program is We Can File on the network service of the NTA. We appreciate your company. Our focus is on the 2020 jump examinations and matters arising. We will take a break now. When we get back, it will be time for a correspondence report and the conversation that follows. Current confirmed case of coronavirus disease in our country. It's important that we spread facts and not rumors. According to the NCDC, wash your hands regularly with soap on the running water and use hand sanitizers frequently. Cover your mouth and nose properly with tissue paper when sneezing or coughing and immediately dispose of the tissue in a covered waste bin. If a disposable tissue is not available, cough into your elbow. Avoid close contact with anyone showing symptoms of respiratory illness such as coughing and sneezing. Verify any information on coronavirus disease from the NCDC. Remember, your health is in your head. This message is brought to you by Dettol Clean Niger in partnership with the Nigerian Center for Disease Control and the Lagos State Office of SDGS and Investment. Treat your family to a cereal that's made from the natural goodness of maize and soya protein and specially combined with Grain Smart, a smart combination of vitamins and iron. So that they have the right kind of energy to help them reach their full potential and turn the simple into amazing. Eat up and carry go because nothing do you. Golden more, make every day amazing. Nicely, good food, good life. We be seen now today or four days when my girls won't come visit me. I need to come go expire. Oh, but my guys, they come follow me. Watch this match. I must for the hand. Every long. Hey, what's happening now? Sorry to disappoint you, but my subscription don't expire. The match is not on my GoTV package. Now you're all be that. I beg, give me your phone. Look, I show you how you go take Dua for my GoTV app for your phone. Life is so much easier with my GoTV app. Make payments, clear error messages, change your package. You can also check your due dates and keep abreast of your payment history. <laughs> The new MyGoTV app is everything you need in one place. So what are you waiting for? Download MyGoTV app now from Google Play or App Store to enjoy the easy life. Go TV. Live it. Love it. Wake up. Wake up. Nothing can hold Breakfast your day. Every day. Nestle, good food, good life. Your information day important, just like your identity. Now the only way we fit take hala you make you go browse easy.gotvafrica.com. Sign in with your IUC number and mobile number and scroll down to personal details and address. Then check well to see say everything bam. You feel change the one we not correct. To finish everything, just click the save button and it don't finish. Thank you. I make sure see my phone number they correct. That's not why GoTV fit call me, make I come collect my own wolf. Angel! <laughs> For my phone in that way because now my correct phone number day for boo. <laughs> go TV, live it, love it. Now look me again, no. Make you go do your own. Following the announcement of travel restriction measures taken by the federal government to contain and manage the spread of COVID-19 on Wednesday, 18th March 2020, the Presidential Tax Force has, as part of the continuing engagement with members of the public, found it necessary to provide answers to the following frequently asked questions. What is restricted entry? It means you are not allowed into the country if you live in or have visited these countries in the last 14 days. As a Nigerian returning home, does restricted entry apply to me? No, you will be allowed into Nigeria but subject yourself to supervised self-isolation for 14 days after arrival. As a diplomat, does restricted entry affect me? No, you will be allowed into Nigeria but subject to supervised self-isolation for 14 days after arrival. 
I am resident in Nigeria, but hold a foreign passport. Does restricted entry affect me? No. You will be allowed into Nigeria, but subject to supervised self-isolation for 14 days after arrival. I'll be transiting through one of the 15 countries to get into Nigeria. Does restricted entry affect me? Yes. If you have been to any of the countries mentioned, you will not be allowed into Nigeria except you are a returning Nigerian, resident or diplomat. When does this come into effect? Saturday, 21st March, 2020. The tax force wishes to encourage members of the public to furnish or seek information and clarification through the COVID PTF NCDC 247 helpline number 080-097-0000-10. Presidential Tax Force on COVID-19 announcer. Yo, welcome back. And uh, with me in the studio is the JAMP Registrar, by Professor Isaac Olede. Uh, Prof, you're welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Yes. Um, let's take two reports first before we uh, start our conversation. From Umar here, as Steve Mwokolo, who visited some of the computer-based JAMP centers in Aba and Umar here, Abia State, reports that uh, some candidates are hopeful that this year's examination will be better than 2019, which was uh, a fraught with uh, logistics and uh, technical challenges. Although the unified tertiary matriculation examinations in Abia State was largely characterized by low turnout in 2019, due to extortion by operators of computer-based test centers. It did not prevent the state from producing the two best JAM candidates who were aged 15 and 16 years. A number of lapses recorded in 2019 were addressed in 2020, leading to the reduction of CBT centers from 23 to just 13 centers in Aba and Umwahia, especially as most of them could not meet up with a JAM requirement of a minimum of 250 functional computer systems as most of them had between 100 and 150. Some students had to be relocated halfway into the examinations due to non-functional computer systems. Some who went through harrowing experiences in 2019 helped for improved scenario as they converged on the various centers in Umuahia for the 2020 exams full of expectations. On the process of writing the exams, the one or some of the computers begin to malfunction. No, this, region, this year arrangement is very good because last year I have some difficulties. The examinations over, not many were disappointed. The exam was fine. It was good. I felt confident, like I was free. The computers functioned well, and there was none that, that broke down. There was light throughout. But then, in every situation, not everything usually goes as planned, as was the case with this young man, who after numerous attempts at hand cleaning, even with sand and hand wash, the system refused to capture his data. Jam says there are provisions for such candidates as they are usually gathered together in Abuja from different states to sit for the examinations on a later date. Well, it's so unfortunate for him. Now, uh, from Lafia, Ben Mitu reports that uh, the process and the conduct of the unified tertiary matriculations examination in all the centers he visited are history, except for some few cases of system failure and the inability of the system to capture fingerprints of some candidates. In some of the centers visited in Lafia, the exercise was smooth except for the delay in commencement of the examinations and lack of familiarity of the candidates with the computer-based test and the generation of PIN which caused delay for some candidates. One issue that is very common in the centers is technical deficiency resulting in the inability of the system to capture the fingerprints of some candidates. Everything was okay. Only that some people came late and we started the exam. Instead of starting 7 o'clock, we started 8.30. Another issue that is common is the sudden change of computer-based test centers, which made it difficult for some candidates to locate their new centers, thereby causing late arrival at the centers. It's like yesterday they cancel our center. We suffered. I don't know the reason. I keep on asking. They say the center have a problem. So far, there, there are no, only few, some few challenges that we have, but our technical uh, people are already working on that to ensure that we have a smooth 
uh, running experience. There are 250 candidates, and by the grace of God, we have not experienced any problem. It has been successful. They add that despite the successes recorded, there are areas that need improvement, like creation of more CBT centers and the production of more jam security equipment, among others. In Lafia, Ben, me too. NTA News. And here we still have a jump registrar, Professor Ishak Kolede. What is your assessment, you know, of uh, today's examination? Mm, so far, so good. It's very, very. It has gone very smoothly. Uh, even where there are few issues, they are expected, and the proper arrangement had been made to rectify them. We expected more issues than we received. So as far as we are concerned at the control room, we were very happy that it had been a successful examination. Now, what is the implication of these exams you know, being taken in batches? Uh, could you explain? You know, uh, usually, uh, it used to be a day thing or something. How, how has it uh, gotten to a level where you're taking it in batches? Well, it had to be in batches because we will not have enough. You require um, 75,000 uh, computers. Um, you, you require... 750,000 computers to write at once. And if you want to write in a day, you require 750. But if you want to write once, you require 1.9 because every, every candidate is entitled to one. But because we cannot, and I'm not aware of anywhere in the world where that is provided, what is being done here is what is done. Computer-based tests is done in batches because students are not writing the same examination. They have uh, exams, uh, tests that have been weighed to be equivalent, and they are writing the same but in different forms and different questions and so on. So we are doing what we are doing in line with global best practices. Well, there are a few cases of uh, biometric failure uh, this time around. Of course, you watched uh, the uh, you know two reports that we just uh, uh, showed, and uh, one person particularly made the frantic effort, you know, to see how uh, the biometric system could capture him, but he never did. So, what is the fate of such persons? Mm, it depends on what caused it, because as far as we are concerned, the most of the cases are man-made. They are induced. Uh, we have caught not less than 10 persons who, after trying and trying, and we have to interrogate them, confess that they did not register. Somebody registered for them, won't we? We will take every issue. We are, we are talking about less than 1,000 out of 1.9 million. So we believe that we will take each of them on its own value. But today, all the 10 that were in Abuja to in uh, Buhari to complain, all the 10 were found. They eventually confessed that they were not the one who registered. So we have many people that are now in custody that after interrogation will confess that somebody uh, asked him that we have two, three undergraduates who went to write for candidates who are just coming in. And when the, uh, the fingers could not so the uh, ordinary person will feel that it was malfunctioning, whereas right, it was functioning. There are very few, very extremely very few, who have genuine cases. And uh, such cases, we look at them. But we believe that mm, it's in line with the uh, world standard, that you have 1,000, less than 1,000 in 1 1.9. So we are not worried. Yeah. But most of these, uh, these candidates that were said not to have been captured or verified. We have recaptured them. That's another thing. We are going to show evidence. We are going to show the candidates that those who registered originally were not the, those who appeared. That's the purpose of recapturing those who appear, their picture and their fingers. So we now bring the original of those who registered along with the man or woman who appeared. Unfortunately, many of them on their own had confessed their sins. 
Yeah, it appears that Jambi is becoming smarter, you know, than, uh, than some of these uh, uh, devious ones. Uh, it does appear that also the malpractices have uh, indeed reduced drastically. You know, what did he do uh, that uh, he didn't do in 2019 that yeah. reduced it to the barest minimum? I think we must thank the law enforcement agencies and the judiciary. I want to believe, I may be wrong, that the fact that prompt action prompt prosecution and in some cases uh, almost instant judgment was delivered. I think that helped because people are now scared because they knew how many people, how many candidates last year are now in jail. Some were jailed for two years, three years and so on. And I believe that has scared some of them. But there are still few who came up with new tricks. But fortunately we were ahead of them and even the new tricks could not work that was one the second one was last year it was possible for a candidate to bribe his way into the examination hall by conniving with the cbt center owners who could open the back door and they would be in and what they would be saying is that oh my fingers cannot be uh, verified and that's why we had to go through all the torture we went through last year but this year once a candidate is not verified, even if he's in the hall, the questions will not be there for him. It's the act of verification that will draw down his or her question. And that had been very helpful because we, a candidate who is in, if you write an exam, it means you are there, uh, you have been verified. If the candidate had not been verified, he will not have his question, even if he's there. After uh, entering, it would simply be told you have not been verified for this examination. And that was learning from last year experience. And there are so many other technical things that had been in place. For instance, last year we were spot checking uh, the CCTV, the footage, watching of what was going on. But this year we more or less dedicate individuals. They are in every of the 663 center, there is a person dedicated to CCTV camera, in which case it's not only recording, it's also watching as it's happening. As happening. And these are not our staff. They are deployed by the Computer Professional Registration Council of Nigeria that we have gone into partnership with, dedicated to watching what was going on and calling attention live to what is happening. And that has also been helpful. Many of the things we discovered after the event last year, we were able to discover them as they were doing. Last year, it took us the number of hours that the examination took to then go through the footages. But this time around, as it's happening, Somebody is there who is watching it and who calls attention mm. to what needs to be done on the spot. That has also been I, I very will, helpful throughout the examination. Well, all right, thank you, Professor Oloide. We'll take a short break now. When we get back, we'll be concluding our conversation. Please stay with us. Enjoy your service. Be nice. You're welcome. Please, where's the restroom? Oh, just go into your right. Thank you. I Everybody love me when I 
do what I do. Cause when I come through, I got the power of cool. Cadbury Hot Chocolate 3 in 1. A delicious combination of rich cocoa and wholesome goodness of milk. Just add hot water to get an instant chocolatey treat. Cadbury Hot Chocolate 3 in 1. Just add hot water. Available in stores at 18 Naira. So sad. You're feeling blue because you got nothing to do. You need to step up to the next to the max deal get go tv max for less this month go tv live it love it nigerians coronavirus is dangerous it can kill when you see this sign high fever cough shortness of breath drowsiness pneumonia don't panic don't hide don't embark in self-medication promptly visit the nearest medical facility report all cases to the nearest hospital prevention is key avoid contact with infected persons avoid crowded areas as much as possible wash your hands regularly use hand sanitizers your life is precious stay alive Live long, live right. This message is sponsored by the Federal Minister of Information and Culture and the Nigerian Film Corporation. Nigerian Film Corporation, powering possibility. You're welcome back. Some candidates uh, who sat for this year's Invited Sherry Matriculation Examination have expressed optimism in the conduct of the 2020 exercise. Mohamed Debawale chatted with some of the candidates shortly after writing the examination in Abukuta. For Ibiruke Precious and some other candidates who are sitting for the examination for the second time, there is an improvement in the processes and conduct compared to previous ones. It was fine because we are like compared to others that they said they road jam this it was not so tiring so the one of this year did not allow us to face more troubles it was okay for some parents our examination body places candidates so far away from home is one concern among few other loose ends that must be tied some are starting by nine o'clock and by nine o'clock they're on the line already and uh, you can see that they're just coming out which shows a lot of improvement. The years pass, you see that issues happen, of course, in different centers. They spend two, three hours waiting for them to be called in. But that didn't happen today. Students get to their centers, first batch, second batch, they are being called in. It's a good one. In Abdelkuta, Mohamed Adibawale, NT News. Well, innovations in the Unified Tertiary Matriculation Examination has brought a whole of experience to candidates. Kevin Wechia monitored the exercise in Asaba and how candidates are coping with the challenges in the conduct of the examinations. The candidates write the examination in badges. They go through security screening before being biometrically captured to ascertain eligibility for the badge and centre. Street adherence to the rules and regulations is enforced. Some items were not allowed into the examination hall, including rings, pens, and electronic device, and see a camera inclusive. Other items banned from the examination hall include mobile phone, ATM card, necklace, and key holder. Well, I was not expecting the question I saw on the system that even some of what I read was not there, but I used my own brain. Mm, nothing really, but the English, English language. I was not expecting the most of the questions that came up, which has the opposite in meaning the nearest me. It was good, but I faced just one subject like that, and but I overcome it. Sure. I wasn't expecting the kind of question I saw today, but all thanks to God. Delta State has 24 accredited computer-based centers. Three are in Asaba, the Delta State capital. In Asaba, Kelvin Wechi, NCA News. All right, uh, we still have uh, Professor Lede here. Uh, give us an idea of uh, uh, the number of students who have been able to uh, be examined and uh, those uh, remaining, and how long it will take to conclude uh, 2020 uh, UTME. Thank you very much. Um, our plan, because of uh, the health situation globally, was that no examination would take place anywhere where school, any state where school has been closed. So that was our plan. And fortunately for us, no state closed schools 
before the end of our examination. As I speak with you, we have concluded in all states of the Federation except Bayelsa State. In Bayelsa, which is the last, they were to write their last paper on Monday. We consulted with the authorities of the state to be sure when the schools were likely to be closed. And we suspected also that it could be anything after Monday. So after consultation, it was decided that the exam for Monday in Bayesa be written on Sunday. So by tomorrow, all examinations, as I speak with you, we have concluded all examinations throughout the country except Bayesa. And in Bayesa, it will be concluded by God's grace tomorrow. So this is to ensure that we do not violate closure of school by any state. Any state in uh, Abuja, for example, we finish on Friday before FCD uh, declared that uh, their school will be closed on Friday. In Kwara, that it will be Monday, we have finished last Thursday. In all the states of the Federation, we, our plan was whenever the authorities of the state closes, uh, 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 decide to close the school, that will be our, our examination will be we'll suspended. Be but for, fortunately, there is no it need to Okay, resume. now the entire exam will end tomorrow in Bayes State. In, now, in Bayes. There were conflicting reports mm -hmm. maybe for today that uh, JAMB uh, is cancelling results uh, being released or something. So, uh, we, could you clarify we, that? We are aware that there is a platform that wants to be recognized carrying such uh, falsehood. And uh, so we decided not to dignify the the platform with it. We have not cancelled any result. The platform even went further than that, uh, putting fake questions, questions that were never uh, ours on the platform for people and so on. This is, uh, you know, many people, we, we cannot but have people who are not stable mentally. So I think what is happening is that there are people who want to uh, take on due advantage of these young boys. We now, neither uh, can do any oh, results. We had that results are being released, is that yes, true? Yes, definitely. Especially those so who started the, the, the examination on Saturday, last Saturday. Yeah. Have they been able to get their results? All of them, even those who did yesterday. We had released those who did. Uh, the, once the examination is concluded, the exam, those who do tomorrow before the end of uh, tomorrow. tomorrow, those who did in Bayesa today, they had their result already. Those who will be doing tomorrow, they will have their, their result. result tomorrow. But in all other states of the federation except Bayesa, we have completed yes. our examination, and where we have the center for the blind that we used to put them together, we have, dis, uh, dis, uh, we have uh, distributed them into more centers so that we do not have more than 20 or 25 in a place. Even that are uh, being concluded today. All right, uh, Professor Isaac Oloye, they would like to thank you for coming on the program today. We uh, wish you well. Of course, you have uh, successfully concluded uh, the 2020 UTME. Uh, we want to appreciate your time and all these uh, explanations you, you gave. Uh, he is the JAMP Registrar, Professor Isaac Oloye. Thank you again for coming. I thank you. We'll take another break. We'll be right back. <laughs> channel where you watch just now don't work huh? no panic you can see me no panic you go do it by yourself like abc oh yeah press the menu button on top of your remote scroll up and down till you see information central then press ok mm, press ok check the signal strength and quality if the signal strength and quality pass 70 make you press the exit button go back go advanced options then choose installation then go to reset and press ok yeah, press ok yeah. Wow, now you safe fit catch all those channels will be one miss road by yourself. <laughs> yes, make your groove for no loss. You see as I do, I'm a bit. Hmm? And I see as I do, I'm. Go TV, live it, love it. <laughs> and I see as we do, I'm.
And for sports update, let's join Olumide. 